Okay, hello everybody. Uh, we are still waiting for the first speaker to show up, but uh, yeah, we, we will start uh, this workshop as scheduled right now. So I'm Kota Yamaguchi from Cyber Agent, and welcome to the workshop on graphic design understanding and generation, which is abbreviated to be called GDAG. And this workshop is uh, focused on the on technologies um, around graphic design. Here I mean graphic design by you know these things, flyers, posters, advertising, presentation, or newsletters, or whatever the documents that uh, convey visual information to the viewers. And graphic design involves a uh, you know, couple of you know, complicated uh, process for creation or you know, editing uh, because it interacts with visuals, texture messages, and then the intention that the designer wants to convey. And, you know, ideally, we would like to have our AI to be able to answer these kinds of you know, questions. Yeah, think of this scenario. Uh, here's one guy asking for, I'd and saying that I'd like to create a banner for an insurance product. Could you suggest design ideas? Then AI responds, maybe, you know, we are still not able to do this, but now, oh, no, it's not that we are able to do this. You know, sure, what about this? And then the AI suggests one banner um, design. And then the designer, you know, continues to ask on, hmm, could you move the main offer a bit upwards and then use funkier fonts with color tones that align with the corporate identity? Then probably right now, as of you know, the year 2024, AI systems are not able to you know, edit anything about this graphic design, right? Because you know, uh, still the you know, GPT-40 is not able to handle graphic design that in, in this way, right? So here are a you know, bunch of you know, challenges involved around a graphic design understanding and generations. Yeah, think of that, you know, yeah, think about this question. Does text to image models solve all of the graphic design programs? I believe you know, most of you, know, you answers no to this question. The specific you know, te you know, technical challenges behind uh, the graphic design is that often the time, the graphic design uh, requires vector format, which is uh, you know a yeah, usual format for designers like you know for, you know the for example the PowerPoint um, presentations have their own you know the format. A you know uh, Adobe Photoshop has its own format, and all of them are you know, the so-called vector graphic format, and then these formats. Uh, preserves the document structure instead of you know the individual dots of pixels, right? And then these in you know, vector format uh, preserves high resolution with you know easy editability and and then controllability. Another thing is the uh, like you know error free typography. We are not you know we should not uh, save the you know texture information in pixels, right? We should um, save uh, the you know, typography information in vector format, like you know what kind of font or what kind of font size to be used in uh, displaying the graphic design. Other uh, uh, specific things uh, related to graphic design is usually uh, graphic design has some intention that conveys that wants to convey something like you know the product images or the copy of the uh, you know, product. And then, yeah, th there are usually existing materials to present and then we need to uh, nicely um, integrate on these ex existing materials to the you know, final uh, graphic design. And then usually also, you know, there are brand guidelines and copyright issues around the uh, design. These are you know, specific challenges around uh, graphic designs to list a few. And then the topics of workshop is listed here. We are, you know, focused on you know, multiple and uh, technical disciplines uh, across, you know, bunch of topics uh, like multi-model document understanding, layout analysis, font and typography analysis, color palette recommendation, and so on. And I hope, you know, the, um, you know, uh, 
audiences here are all interested in these you know, technical topics. Okay. Uh, before you know, going into the you know, uh, presentations, uh, let me just uh, introduce a few of the you know, state of the art research in this uh, topic. Uh, this is one kind of you know the uh, emerging uh, topic, which is a text to template generation, and usually on the text to image models and generate a uh, image in terms of the raster graphic, but here text to template uh, task is uh, aimed at generating that document structure instead of a raster pixels. And uh, you know, representative work is uh, the entitled core uh, by you know, Jer, Jer and um, his works uh, where uh, he tries to uh, generate a, um, the complete graphic uh, design structure from the texture prompt. This is one kind of you know, representative uh, recent topic in this uh, work, uh, in the domain of the graphic design. Another uh, thing uh, I would like to note is the vector font generation. This is uh, you know, the, another kind of you know, the, uh, important topic where uh, we would like to generate uh, fonts or typographic information in vector format instead of the raster format. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next thing. So yeah, I believe uh, a couple of you know, that uh, there are a couple of fundamental techniques to think about graphic design understanding and generation. The first and foremost is the structural modeling. As I repeat many times, the graphic design involves a structure like the layers or path information, which are in uh, nowadays uh, represented by a sequence structure, which can be nicely handled by a transformer based architecture. Yeah, we can think about say uh, Photoshop layers or you know, PowerPoint, you know, the objects in PowerPoint slides as a sequence of elements. And then I believe in transformer-based architecture is nicely fits into this uh, data structure to handle all of them. Another thing is that the, you know, this domain still lacks a large scale pre-trained models like other fields like LLMs or VLMs. And then we are still in need of you know, a nice benchmark data set as well. These are, I believe, fundamental challenges and then techniques uh, we need in this domain. Okay. And uh, in the long run, uh, we probably need to think more about the uh, kind of an you know, upstream of the uh, creative workflow. Uh, we are, you know, mainly talking about uh, you know the uh, technologies in the surface or the, you know, the very end of the uh, creative workflow pipeline because you know we are yeah thinking mainly you know the uh, computer vision researchers think about generating a specific data structure at the end of the process but in reality creative workflow starts from the you know very beginning of the creative briefing with uh, say a uh, customers and then designers right and then this upstream uh, conceptualization stage probably needs more about you know the uh, semantics and then yeah then we need to probably interact more into semantics like you know what kind of concept they want to convey or what kind of uh, motif to use and then these are probably the uh, domain in maybe NLP or whatever you know, the uh, research field dedicated to semantics, but uh, we probably in the future need to um, delve and dive more into this uh, uh, regime of the uh, process. And uh, in this workshop, we have three um, wonderful invited speakers, uh, Cheli Zhao and Cheli uh, Xi Jiao Sun and Zhou Hui Lian yeah, from Peking University. Okay. Uh, yeah, we are looking forward to you know, seeing uh, speakers to present uh, wonderful talks. Uh, here is a summary of you know, our program. Uh, this is the opening uh, session. And then the next, uh, we, we are going to have an invited talk by Cheli, followed by Xi Jiao, and then Zhou Hui. Okay.
And then uh, later we are going to have paper spotlight presentations by three speakers, and then yeah, we go into the uh, we will go into the poster session at the end. And the poster session will happen in the ARC exhibition hall, which is another building. So uh, be careful; it's going to be five minutes walk. Uh, we would, uh, I would like to thank all the organizers in uh, you know preparing this wonderful workshop. Uh, thank you, guys. And then, yeah, uh, please enjoy this workshop. Thank you. So we are going to have the first invited speaker, Chelly. Hi. Are you ready? <laughs> sure. So we need to have a Zoom a streaming. Are you able to connect? But here is the information. Oh, I need to have the Wi-Fi on? Yeah, the, the Wi-Fi information is also here. Media organizers okay, work to do hold. Yeah, be, be careful. Wait. Hold, hold. Okay. Do you have a Zoom uh, presentation? Yeah, join the meeting. Okay. Yeah, and then are you sure you're uh, sure for uh, sharing the screen in Zoom? Uh, let me check the room uh, at sharing the right screen. Yeah, just share for a second. Share for a second. Yes. Terry is a research scientist at Adobe Research based in San Jose. Uh, her work lies in the intersection area of computer graphics, computer vision, machine learning, and edge design. Her research interests mainly focus on data-driven graphic design with minimal data, content generation, and manipulation. She is excited to divide algorithm to enable, to enable designers to pre-design and publish work uh, to top venues such as SIGGRAPH, SIGGRAPH Asia, SIGGRAPH PR, ICTV, ICTV, and Class. Let's welcome Cherry. Yes, thanks for giving the invitation for uh, giving us a talk here and thanks for the introduction. Hi, everyone. Cherry from the Google Research. So, today I'd like to share my thoughts about like, an AI uh, shape graphic design creation. And since I'm from Adobe, I hope everyone knows AI is artificial intelligence from the Adobe Illustrator. Um, so, I'd like to uh, starting from like more definition about the graphic design. Uh, so, what is the graphic design? So according to the Oxford Languages definition, the definition is the art or skill of combining text and pictures in advertisements, mixing or books. Um, the from my understanding is not really enough for this concept. I would say like it's not limited to advertisements, mixing or books. Like the slide I'm showing is also one of the graphic design, and also when you go into the commercial, uh, like shopping online, you will see also those banners and the graphic design. So it's kind of broad concepts. Uh, rather than just like the uh, the advertisement itself. 
And although it's not only limited to the text and pictures, it covers a lot of elements actually, such as the thumb, the, the thumb face, uh, the photo, illustration, texture, uh, the icon, and also the color and layout. So each of these components plays a really crucial way for delivering some like the impression to the audience. So designers will use those kind of um, uh, techniques for trying to uh, echo some like impression or like doing some like on purpose uh, objectives when they design those kind of the things. Um, so as you may find creating a graphic de design is kind of a challenging task because there are so many elements. Like each like the bump face, there are maybe thousands of the bump face, and the color, maybe there is a color where we can choose any of the color in it. So it's a really large. There maybe have some more than thousands or hundreds of the kind of the options you can choose. So with this kind of large exploration space, you really designer also want to create some like a purpose. Like when you design a banner, you want to attract people to buy the, um, the, the things from you. Or like if you want to create the event poster, you do want to attract people to come into these events. So there will like when you design those um, graphic design, you need to consider about this kind of objectives or purpose in mind. Um, except this kind of the objective, you also need to take care of the kind of aesthetics or the harmonization of the design. Uh, so it makes the design more visually appealing, uh, trying to make them more uh, like look, like people enjoy the design. Um, so according to this kind of a consideration, it's kind of a tedious process. You need a lot of the true and error process before you may have your own satisfied result. So it's kind of challenging when you're uh, when you're doing this kind of the the, the task. So what? Uh, so before the deep learning uh, like uh, very popular, how people address those issues with those technical papers? So I would like to introduce some of the uh, like representative work. They're not expensive, but like we can have a look. Um, so for the font, uh, initially when the people doing the uh, font or text, when you want to add some like the font face, use some font face, they will do some retrieval. So they can use two ways. One way is that they were just using some similar font and trying to retrieve the font, which is similar to what you are using. Or they can use some attributes such as like the different, uh, whether they are thin, whether they are stylish, whether they are round or something. Or they also like from the uh, O'Donovan and um, the Anthony Foster, um, like this paper is poetry, font selection using Cosos attributes. They do use the Cosos in the Amazon Turk for collecting This way, you can easily get the font uh, like from this kind of the simple um, attributes or the, the features. And for the color, um, so starting from like after Newton finding the color spectrum, uh, like when he writing the book of optics, there are like a lot of methods such as Maxwell. Uh, they're trying to like uh, study some like the color theory. And for this work, the color harmonization, uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel was like uh, written in the 2006 with her, uh, his authors. They just trying to predefine some of the templates. And they're kind of assume all the color within this gray area, they are harmonized with each other. So they're trying to make this template for uh, helping the design or the image to be color harmonized. And also, there are also some like work they're trying to study the color palette. And they, uh, so it's still the paper uh, from Ogawa Adobe, and they are trying to learn this kind of color compatibility from the data set and trying to learn those patterns. So it's easily, and he also uh, kind of develop a method with the uh, linear regression, trying to predict those scores, if you can see, or telling people whether this color palette is more aesthetic pleasing or not. Um, so this is the earliest stage when they're trying to study the color related uh, the, the, the text. Um, and regarding to the layout, uh, so earlier work, they were having a lot of work related to the layout retargeting, such as this paper from Kuma and his uh, and her co-author at the 2014, they are trying to retarget in the web design. So since the web design, you know, they have the HTML, so they can do the DOM view and DOM easily for mapping those elements and trying to retarget in from the two uh, web pages and it's kind of a self transfer. Um, and before, even earlier, people are more relying on the templates and dynamic, dynamic programming. 
but uh, like after like uh, they're using those methods when in the 2014 around that time there are a lot of mail paper they're trying to learn something from the data also but they learn really like a simple heuristic uh, rules like they will learn what's the balance factor what's the hunger factor and then they can use like when they having the new design come in uh, so these are the two words uh, really great work from the Jacobs and uh, his co-authors and Donald from uh, with his co-authors were the design layout. And so after introducing some of the works before the deep learning era, I will like uh, think some like takeaways. Uh, so the first thing is like um, you, if you look at carefully about those works, you'll find those paper you really did just study a single element single design element rather than uh, study the whole design. And they are relying on some handcrafted features or human bias, such as, you know, like when you study the colors, maybe the hue features, when you study the fonts, maybe they have like the, the curve curvature or the several features. So this really rely on the human expertise when they design those features. And it's also less creative because it's really manual effort. And also, you can see a, a signal that people are starting to learn from the data set. But the data set is still really small, uh, showing from hundreds to thousands of data points. And uh, they are also, based on this data, they are already starting to use some machine learning techniques, such as SEM and the linear uh, regression, which doesn't need a lot of the data. Uh, so some of the methods they are doing like in an optimization way and you, you will find like if you're just using optimization driven method, the sometimes the time can be slow, but it takes time for you to obtain the satisfied results you want. So this is like some of the features when it comes to the, uh, the, the research works before the deep learning. So what if we have the deep learning? So deep learning is a kind of a subset of machine learning that uses multi-layer neural networks, we call the deep neural networks, trying to simulate the complex decision-making power of the human brains. So it's like the diagram I showed here. Uh, among them, there are two really typical neural networks, which is really common when we do the graphic design research. The first one is the GAN, which is the generative adversarial network, and also the VAE, which is variational encoder. So people really rely on these kind of two techniques when they're doing the graphic design creation. So similar, we still taking this kind of design element as examples. First, let's see some like the font based uh, the, the study with the deep learning. So rather than using those manual design features, the uh, the works they are trying to learn the features from the data, such as uh, for the big font, they are trying to learn the visual features from the pixel format of the font, trying to do the classification. So they train a model with the reconstruction and the classification task and trying to learn the font uh, representation in that way. And also uh, the work will always his co-authors and trying to learn in the implicit sleep shape representation uh, through the convolution neural network. Oh, sorry, <laughs> that this work is like they're trying to represent the uh, the the kind of the uh, glyphs with a lot of uh, a combination of the primitives trying to uh, represent with the curves for um, like the font based uh, recognition and those stuff. And for more application driven tasks, and we have uh, developed this method trying to uh, predicting the font base and their attributes within the web design. So when you have a web design, you want to design the text and you need to find the font base, we will automatically recommend the one fitting to the text. So they have some application for the fonts. And furthermore, there are some really fancy stuff when they're using the GAN model and VE model, trying to do the um, font style transfer. I really like this kind of work. They're trying to transfer the style from the maybe reference font into the type of the whole set of the alphabet. Uh, and they can even transfer from the images with some like this kind of key. Um, and it looks really cool. And so similarly to the font, I would also like to introduce some of the work related to the icon and shape. Um, so in the 2020, we developed this kind of algorithm and the interface called the component. 
really is trying to create this online account that is a combination of the mind together, uh, like driven by the um the kind of the model behind, and you can give this like a prompt, simple prompt, and you can generate this online account. And more recently, there is a word called Interactive, which is a really gives you a really clever idea. They're trying to learn this icon generation or shape generation. And what they are doing, they're trying to like let's just assume each of the shape is a like deformable circle. They will deform the circle of, of the contour point and trying to generate those kind of the shapes, uh, which is really interesting to myself. Um, and for the uh, for the color perspective. Uh, rather than like previously, if you remember for the previous color work, they usually just use a single color, which may have four to five colors. But later on, they find this is not enough for the graphic design because there has so many elements, which is multimodality. So to get more customized and expressive color combination of the graphic design, um, there are some works they are trying to learn the color distribution of the color, not only from the color itself, they also considering those mirror elements such as the layout and those kind of arrangements. Um, so the actual work uh, from the Yuan uh, and the process is trying to call the info colorizer is trying to learn those color colors for the infographics. And the below work, uh, the color recommendation for vector graphics uh, documents, this work they are trying to um, predict the color palette for different components, such as the images, shape, and text. They all have their individual palettes when they're doing this kind of the color task. And for the layout, um, so researchers are trying to learn the model to um, kind of giving the elements have or the number of the elements they're trying to lay out the, the kind of the design. So early work, they also based on the GAN model and VAE model. For layout GAN, it introduced a novel like a well frame framework that is based on rendering the graphic design, even if like discrete uh, space, and then you can having the pixels per signal when you're training the model. And also, uh, there is the the right work, the cost of time generation modeling for uh, graphics uh, layouts. They are using the VAE to do so. And to that condition on more high level concepts, such as the keywords um, and also the category, uh, the below work uh, is shown from uh, with her authors and trying to uh, using a GAN model to encoding those multi modality inputs. So as you can see, those kind of design, uh, the algorithm is only for the different elements. And starting from with the different and yeah, more data coming in, there are more works they are trying to uh, kind of understand the design as a whole, or trying to create the design as a whole. So in our work at the 2018, uh, we're trying to learn, like uh, we just rely on the online data set and trying to learn what the personality of the design. So the personality is like the, whether the design is cute, whether the design is uh, dramatic, and it can try, like after with a, a sound like a weekly supervised learning, and can recommend those elements for like in, enhance the personality of the design. And it can also transfer the personality among the design, such as in this case, they can make the outer one more vintage based on the reference and make the below one more dynamic. dynamic. And later on, people in this community takes a lot of efforts to tidy and collecting those well curated data sets. Such as uh, from Kota, the customer of Bay. They uh, hey, like a uh, Chinese travel data set, which is really a milestone for the graphic design community. And then you can have more kind of possibilities when you work working on this domain. And more recently, FlexDM treats the graphic design as a set of the multi model elements, trying to predict the properties of the elements, including the element type, the position, the styling attributes for those image and text. Uh, elements under unified architecture. So then here are some takeaways for this kind of early deep learning uh, deep, deep learning stage. So you can see people are kind of already taking advantage of deep learning models such as GAN, VAE, and also large scale online data. And they are trying to learn in ad adaptive and the customized features from data rather than using some human like handcrafted features. And also, because of the graphic design data, it's really hard to obtain the label. Like, if you use Amazon search, you can only have a limited number of the locations. So, there are lots of work they're using reconstruction, self swipe, or with quick swipe learning, trying to learn those features and generation. Uh, and also, like, it can 
for the many creative plans such as the bounce data transfer we were showing previously. Um, and also there is some limitation at this stage because the data set is still kind of limited and it's only limited to the graphic design data set. You can already imagine how limited it will be because each graphic design needs a lot of human duration for having a high quality data. So that's reason the data is still kind of limiting skill. Usually it will be a few thousand that will be already a really large skill. So then um, in recent two years, there are so many works related to the Gen and language, large language model. And you know, I, I think everyone already know that. And maybe using them, I've like, um, seen a lot of amazing results generated by those models, uh, such as a new journey, and also the Adobe Firefly. And for large language model, the ChatGPT is a really representative one, everyone already know. So it kind of blow people's mind about how the uh, the content has been generated and used. And also like there are lots of the other algorithms such as Laura Content Ad, you can always like customize based on the different content. And you can see this area goes so fast. This is the uh, uh, well from our one. And you can see like within just a few years, there's so many large language models have been happened and invented from the different company or the organization. So then people are curious, why did they can be used in the rapid design? So actually they are already having a lot of products. They are already using this kind of technique in their real products, such as the Canva. This is a feature I just uh, borrowed from their web official website. So they kind of collaborate with like Dali, trying to using those kind of Gen AI features in their graphic design workflow. And also I'd like to show you, uh, this is our like, Adobe product called Adobe Express. It's focused on the graphic design. And they also have in this trailer for advertisement. I like to <laughs> play with it. Oh, there's no sound. Okay. Let's see. Or I can Sorry, my, yeah. Or I can play on my hand. Yeah, I think she can do that. I don't know whether there will be something. Okay, let me let me mute. Yes, you can. Variety, lots of the features are already in the Adobe Express, uh, those products. And also, there are some other products from like Microsoft and Designer. So every company they're trying to using like this giant and large language model in their uh, real use cases. So how it happens? Why some way they can be using the graphic design? So this is a kind of relative comparison about the data set we're using for the graphic design data set. As we know, for a few thousand, even for the twenty thousand, already really large scale for the graphic design itself. But for the uh, model we're showing the large language model or the deep vision, they're using so many data, like over the billion of the data. So you can see like. A, when you're seeing those scale, it's kind of uh, really not comparable. And also for the uh, general training data for those diffusion and large language models, they also contain a lot of content from design, like the icons, the graphic design stuff. So they actually learn the features, those rich image features, and also rich multiple data features that they can use for the graphic design real application. So in the remaining time, I'd like to sh quickly show a few of the works. Maybe Kota already showed some of them. For the recent uh, research works, they are using the uh, this kind of models. 
Um, so for the icon, these are uh, two of our works uh, related to the, like you representing the icon in the exhibition campus. So the first one is um, the text to vector generation with neural text representation. This will be represented in the CGRAPH 2024. So this is trying to generate in the, um, the vector in the SVG tabs with the uh, instruction, as a, not instruction, like the prompt uh, and the input. And uh, so when you have this icon, you can easily customize later because it's in the SVG tab. Uh, and also the blue one is the task guided the vector graphics customization. So in this case, when you have the initial vector, you want to generate more. You can just use the prompt and it, we will just customize for you. It will still share the original identity and still following the prompts and also in the SVG space that you can easily customize with the existing software. And in this webinar, we also have one work called Naval, trying to neural implicit vector layers for text vector generation. So rather than representing them in SVG space or the pixel space, we're creating this kind of the neural layer implicit representation for the vector. So we compare also with the relatedness vector fusion for the quantitative results, and we do have a more kind of vector like uh, the icon like shape. And also for the layouts, uh, recently there are lots of work they are using diffusion, such as layout DM. Uh, they're trying to uh, using the discrete state space diffusion model to model the layout problem. And also in this webinar, uh, we have a work called the Vero Layout Composer. So rather than only using either pixel or the vector space, we kind of combine these two space. So we're trying to borrow the idea from the both vector and the pixel because for the vector, they will better know the alignment and for the mirror, they will better know the, the whole perception. And also there are two really great works for trying to generate the design as a whole. So when you're just giving some instructions, they can directly give you the design with under a, a kind of a system. Um, so this is the core and open core. And open core, we're having a post session. So if you are interested, you can come to have a discussion there. Uh, so after introducing a lot of this work, that was like uh, some final takeaways. I would say like when we go back to the title, we're saying can AI shape the graphic design creation? Uh, if you listen, I would say definitely the answer is yes. You can see it already evolved a lot when there are more kind of the new um, results like new algorithms coming in. Um, but like, uh, it's, I don't think it's already enough because you will see like for creating this graphic design, there are so many subtle elements and it's very subjective, such as there are lots of the kind of when you're having the text, you're having the line, there's also line space and word space that you need to consider. So it's really a complicated problem. So we still have a long way to go. And also when, especially if you are a novice, when you do the graphic design, sometimes you will see whether the design looks good or not, you are not really confident. So for the novices, people really don't know how to don't know how to evaluate the design. So I feel like if we're developing some methods trying to help people know uh, whether the design looks good or not, what's the advantage or disadvantage, those kind of things, that would be super important. And also, it, it still be great to can improve the transparency of the model itself to the user. Then the user will know why they make this decision from the model itself. Uh, and also, I would say there are also a lot of the efforts we can do in the HCI community for the human computer interaction, trying to make the, those kind of tools more user-friendly and easy to use to increase the efficiency when the people do the graphic design. Uh, so, but I'm already really glad to see the community has grown and a lot of the really good work happened recently. Uh, so that's my major things I want to share today. And thank you. Uh, if you do have some questions or you want to discuss with me, this is my homepage. You can scan it. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, thanks, Sherry, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, we have uh, about uh, 10 minutes to, you know, take questions from the audience. Hi, go ahead. Good, uh, but thank you, first of all, for the amazing uh, yeah, presentation. You. Is SVG just a de facto standard for vector graphics representation uh, that we should just carry on in the age of AI, or do we come up with a new way to represent graphics uh, with text that is more AI-friendly? And whether Adobe is doing any work in that direction. 
Yeah, I would say like the uh, existing there are already a lot of the ways to represent in the vector such as you can use the pixel to represent the vector, you can use the SVG and you can use the curvature and you can also deform the circle like with those kind of the points. Uh, so far there is not a really uniform like it can do everything good representation for the vector. Uh, it's still under exploration because vector is kind of the uh, and you need to like uh, maintain the editability for the vector, right? When you're having vector, you want to edit them easily. So I don't know why the SVG is the best, best way for representing the um, the vector when you train a model. Because when you train a model, you always want to learn best easily to learn the vector and also still maintain the editability. So there's still kind of the efforts for the future works. Oh. It doesn't work. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, maybe I don't need a Mac. Okay, so then there's still like some future works we can do trying to like ensure the model easily to learn the vector while still maintaining the editability. So for the so for the learning because the vector data is really not that much and also they are not in the uniform shape. When you're checking those SVG, even the same path like the circle, they can use in multiple ways to represent the SVG. So that's why I don't think, I'm not sure why the SVG is the most uh, yeah, good way for representing it. And for the Adobe, yeah, as you can see, we are having some like the intern work that will represent uh, that will be present on the Wednesday. If you are interested, you can come and talk through the post section. And we do try some internal efforts, trying to find a way to represent the vector and trying to learn them. Yeah, and also there is a, another line in the work. It's like you learn in the pixel space and then you do the vectorization. That's also another way to walk around. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Actually, this is the first time I hear you talk about the like it's super interesting. Yeah, thank and, you. Yeah. Um, so my question is like when it comes to manipulation uh graphic design. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are talking about AI error, so we are talking about like something like texture like the show. Mm -hmm. So do you think is texture the best solution to like manipulation? Because from my perspective, uh for example, you show that you can make some uh, graphic design more than that. Mm -hmm. But if I want, I want to say, I want to make it less than that or more than that, then I'm based on the result. So is there a kind of context to this, or is there another another way that maybe something like we have we expose some API and mm -hmm. tune the factor and when it is two, it is super. Then I mean, when it is one, it is medium and something like this. Yeah, it's really, yeah, yeah, it's a really good question. Uh, and I think it depends on how specific your idea will be. If you are just like having really high level idea, then text would be a really good way for you to express the customization because you can just easily to describe with the text and those description. But if you do have some more specific idea, you have your own specific mind of how to maybe do the animation or the dynamic, you can, I think, I think there are like earlier where they do have some like a drag method, you can just drag some control points or give some like the maybe flow with some arrow and they will just do the animation that way. And recently we also have some work now in this Eurasia conference, but they're trying to do some like the animation transfer with some example. So you can just use the example as a guide rather than using some like this. Because some, sometimes it's hard to describe those animation or those kind of things. Yeah. 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 Okay. Any other question from the audience? I'll oh, go ahead. Yeah. So, I'm curious about like, uh, like some kind of like uh, design generation or like maybe design. Uh, would it be like for new new things uh, directly mean for like the critics of like the people who see it like to do like maybe to be like for how to say like uh making like certain like to evoke certain emotions from the like the audience or like uh giving them like certain like images about the product mm -hmm. is it uh it's about like recently and and, uh... I think they're not deliberately to do so. Like our earlier work in 2018, we're trying to learn the design, those kind of personality, like whether you can evoke some, like whether you do it's really cute, it's really romantic. 
themselves. But recently, I just feel the large language model or the business model, they may already have a certain type of quality. But I haven't tried. Maybe you can try on those kind of already existing products. I would say they may already embed a certain like emotion. Like if you see I want a cute design, maybe they just use some cute fonts, cute color, potentially. Because when they're training on large scale data set, they may have this kind of feeling already, but they're not deliberately trying to make that. But at least you can try. But that's not a really good direction because you really, when you're having a design, you want to evoke some impression from the audience. So that's a really good direction to study. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so you really like when you're doing the generation, you will have some of the data set as ground truth. So the way to measure the similarity for those ground truths and the images. And when you study like a certain like design of potential fonts or the color, they also have their own original ground truth when you do the like test that. So they're just using the, like similarity as a metric. But generally, I would say yes, the graphic design is really subjective. When you like marry them, maybe a certain type of like whether they're aesthetic pleasing, they're really human subjective thing. So also there are uh, some work they're trying to collect in a human opinion through the crowdsourcing platform and trying to develop in that metric in that way. Yeah, through the user studies or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, any other question? Okay. Yeah. Go. So usually the layout they just like either they take in the number of elements or the elements have as input or the design content. The output will just be the coordinates or the sometimes they will have the element type also. So it will be like either uh, the the four bounding box, the coordinates or the either diagonal if they're assume you're just just a rectangle. And later on for the more recent work, they sometimes when they generate the layout, they also generate the content. But in that way, they may generate the viral features or maybe just the image itself as output. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other uh, question from the audience? Okay. No more? Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Again, the speaker for a wonderful presentation. Okay. Uh, we are going to have the next. Speaker uh, who is Xi Zhao, and yeah, she's uh, preparing for her presentation. Okay. Uh... You. <laughs> Zoom is fine, and we just need to connect to here. If it works, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Maybe you need to switch the screen uh, number. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, you can start, or maybe yeah, we actually have two more minutes to start the question, but uh, maybe you can start. Yeah, yeah, maybe now we can introduce. Okay, so, the session, uh, uh, the topic is by Dr. Sidiopan, uh, and she now received the uh, PhD degree from Nanka University and she spent the uh, uh, senior research in Microsoft Research Asia and she has uh, been person many years at Texas on graphic design. And uh, I'm personally also a big fan of Chijo and I'm very excited to hear uh, that talk. Okay, let's start on Chijo. Huh? Okay. 
Um, so my question here is, um, you're going to be to design on the So, uh, what do you want? Um, design is what you for the elements in the materials in your way that can uh, accomplish a specific goal. Uh, for example, in uh, simple design, the goal could be um, awareness and congestion. Uh, in mechanical design, the goal could be a specific functionality. And also in graphic design, the goal could be the uh, aesthetics or, or whether it conveys information effectively. And uh, it's similar for uh, architectural device. Um, 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 that creation is actually very uh, difficult. Uh, because it costs us cost a, a lot of time and it also uh, requires uh, many years of training when you become, become a professional designer. Um, so uh, in the past, uh, we have many software and the tools uh, to help us create designs. Uh, for example, in mechanical design, uh, we have auto safety and uh, auto desk. And in graphic design, we have uh, Photoshop, Canva, and uh, PowerPoint. Uh, with um, these tools and uh, uh, softwares, uh, design creation has been changed a lot. Uh, first, uh, firstly, uh, we can have more uh, accurate and uh, precise design applications with these this, uh, tools. And also, uh, with the virtual man man uh, manipulation from these tools, we can uh, receive reduced uh, cost. And um, these softwares also provide uh, good documentation, uh, which could improve um, uh, communication and knowledge sharing. Um, but um, this is the past uh, what have been achieved by softwares and the tools. Um, so uh, if we could have, uh, if we could um, create a new age of design creation, um, what uh, what do you want? Uh, I believe everyone uh, will want uh, efficiency, uh, enhanced efficiency, uh, which means we can generate prototypes more quickly and uh, um, our uh, repetitive actions can be automated. And also we would um, expect um, a boost in creativity, uh, which means um, a system can uh, provide new ideas which um, we have never been considered by our humans. And sometimes um, uh, we often expect personalization, uh, which means the design suggestion um, is provided based on the understanding of uh, user preference, uh, target audience, and the content of design. And we could find uh, there is a, a rising interest in pioneer such a new age of design creation. Uh, we could see uh, there are lots of uh, companies and communities are discussing and uh, even uh, investing in this area. Um, in this talk, um, I want to discuss about the Role of foundation models in the uh, in leading the way of uh, creating a new age for design creation. Um, I would like to start from the uh, strength of foundation models. Uh, first of all, uh, we all know that um, foundation models are very flexible. It can be used across diverse tasks. Um, if we have flexibility in design creation, uh, we can have a better efficiency and also uh, boost creativity. And also. Um, foundation model is good at um, percept uh, percepting user intent very smartly and uh, sharply. Uh, with, such a, uh, with such capability in design creation, uh, we can expect a better experience in uh, personalization. And uh, also, um, there are extensive and cross-disciplinary knowledge in the foundation model. Uh, if we have never, uh, if we could never have knowledge, we could expect uh, better efficiency, creative, and uh, personalization at the same time. Um, in the beginning, I want to take uh, graphic level design as an example to show um, our exploration in the in the role of foundation model in design creation. So, uh, what is graphic layout? Um, it is an arrangement of uh, visual elements. Um, for example, for the uh, mobile UI here, uh, we, um, it, has, uh, it has elements such as uh, image, text, and button. And uh, each element has um, its top and uh, left coordinate and weight and height. And there are some uh, other graphic layouts in, such as uh, web banner, um, slides, and magazines. So um, in the domain of graphic layout generation, there are many tasks 
Um, for example, the refinement completion and the, con and the uh, generation completion of the tests. Um, actually, uh, currently different tests are sold, uh, sold by different vendors. Uh, here I give a table about um, what technology has been built for different tests. Uh, we can find for, uh, across different dimensions like uh, input and output format, model architecture, and the learning method. Uh, there are many, many uh, technologies for different tasks. But um, if we think the formation model, they are actually uh, very flexible, uh, which can be used across diverse tasks. Um, one key factor um, that contributes to um, such flexibility is to use sequence as a unified input output and completion for diverse tasks. So um, this motivates motivate us to uh, unified graphic layout generation as a sequence generation problem. Um, our fir um, the first component in our framework is a constant serialization uh, module, uh, which represents a layout and a constant style unified sequence format. Then we leverage a typical transformer encoder decoder to generate the layout. At last, we further introduce a decoding space restriction module. Uh, which can do the invisible options in the predicted dis distribution. Um, for the constant serialization, uh, we have a basic observation, um, which um, both layout and constraints are about elements and their file attributes, including type, uh, laptop, prominence, weight, and heat. So uh, with this observation, our method is for um, the first step in our method is to um, define a set of vocabularies of attributes. Um, for example, for time, uh, the, the vocabulary can be um, image, text, and button. Um, for coordinates, the vocabulary can be inferred from zero to um, 255. Then, um, after having such a vocabulary, uh, we can concatenate the tokens from different vocabularies to construct a layout and a single constraint. And uh, furthermore, we can concatenate sequence of different constraints um, by a fixed order to construct a combined constraint. Uh, here are some examples for different tasks about its uh, input how, how its input sequence looks like and how its output sequence looks like. Um, after the uh, after the transformer decode encoder decode structure, the decoder uh, predicts the distribution. Uh, we developed two pruning strategies to help the model um, predict better layout. The first one is about uh, constraint pruning, uh, where we use invisible values that violate the constraints. And we also have the um, probability pruning. Um, it proves the values with a uh, very low probability because adding such elements to the uh, sequence um, might uh, lead to a very bad layout. And also, we introduce a backtracing uh, back um, tracking strategy, uh, which goes back the decoding space if um, when all the by, all the values are proved. We compare the method um, called uh, layout former plus plus here uh, with the baseline. Um, note that all the baselines only handle uh, one or two tasks, two tasks, uh, while the our method can handle all the tasks. And uh, our method also uh, outperform outperform baselines on all the tasks. Um, next, um, I want to uh, go uh, more closely to look more closely about the input constraints. Um, we can find that the input the input constraints are actually the um, rigid guidelines. Uh, taking the generation condition types as an example, the user are restricted to provide the exact types to the system. Um, such uh, rigid guidelines for each task actually are not tailored for user days. Um, it is tailored for a uh, computer. Um, considering a foundation model, we can find that they can uh, quickly get what the user truly want, even if the input is complex and uh, weak sometimes. So uh, this, this motivates motivate us to propose a new task uh, to provide a friend, friendly way to control graphic layout generation, we call it text, um, text, text to layout. Um, here is an example. Um, the input could be 
Um, I want to show some standard cases of news, each with uh, each of which has a title and a summary, and there should be a heavy sense of talk. Um, there are several challenges challenges in this task. The first one is the uh, um, implicit constraints. Uh, for example, here the title and the summary uh, actually refers both to uh, text boxes, and also um, the constraints may be combined together. Uh, for example, uh, here are um, constraints about types like uh, a title and a summary, and there are also constraints about the position like um, a heading at the top. Um, additionally, the constraints might be uh, incomplete sometimes. Uh, in this example, the user do not see uh, I want to an image, but as a news page, uh, we know it's better to have an image on, on, on the page. So, um, for this model, actually, uh, not motivate, motivate, motivate us to think about this, um, this new, uh, new task, but also uh, give us a way of potential, of potential to solve this task. Um, our proposal is to uh, introduce an uh, intermediate augmentation to decouple the problem. With the um, intermediate augmentation, um, here are two stages in our proposal. Um, the first is the parse stage, which um, translates the different language to the intermediate augmentation. Um, this stage can be uh, finished by a finished model, either by tuning or from it. And uh, the next stage is the place stage, uh, which uh, translates the constraints, um, uh, the, the explicit constraints to a layout. Um, as we have discussed in the last work, actually there are good solutions for uh, explicit constraints. So uh, for the parse stage, the most important pro problem here is to how to design the intermediate edge fragmentation. Uh, here uh, we follow two design principles. Uh, the first one is the uh, expressiveness, uh, which ensures um, that it, it is able to express diverse user constraints. Um, the other one is formalism, uh, which ensures that uh, it is friendly enough to existing NLP technologies. Uh, with that, uh, we can leverage this uh, constraint foundation model to finish the parse stage. Um, for the place stage, uh, we adopt the sequence to sequence model uh, introduced in the in the last work, uh, but with two small tricks. The first one is for combined constraints. Uh, we simply uh, serialize each constraint and concatenate them in a certain order. The other one is for incomplete constraints. Uh, for this problem, we introduce a categorical attribute to indicate whether element is seen by user or also completed. And for the uh, for the play stage, the the most important the most uh, challenges um, here is um, we need lots of data with the uh, intermediate age representation as input and uh, uh, layout as output to choose such model. But such data is very expensive and hard to uh, collect. Um, on, the, on the other hand, we have another observation. Um, we find that unlabeled layout contains um, very, uh, very abundant patterns. So um, our proposal is to uh, exploit unlabeled layouts, uh, which means uh, we first synthesize intermediate augmentation from layouts by a set of, a set of heuristics heuristic-based rules, then we leverage such uh, synthetic data to constrain the model. Um, but there are gaps between the synthesized intermediate augmentation and the real uh, intermediate augmentation inferred from the user description. Uh, look at the uh, example at the right side uh, here. In the synthesized intermediate augmentation, uh, there are large images um, produced by the uh, heuristic-based rules, but actually the user did not specify that. So uh, to mitigate such um, gaps between synthesized data and the uh, real data, we further introduce a fine-tune step, which use labeled data to um, train the model. Um, because this is the first work in the text to layout task, we adopt some uh, methods from related to maze and compare it with our method. Um, as shown in um, this picture, we can find the, our, our, our method which is best performance. Uh, the last topic I want to discuss is about uh, data efficiency. Um, graphics allow 
graphic layout is very um very big concept. There are many types uh, like uh explicit conflict uh explicit content generation text to layout and uh, content generation content aware generation and also it has many domains such as document uh, poster android and uh, web layout so uh, for each task and domain the model needs to be trained with enough data and this will be a very big challenge here uh, because we cannot collect so much data um, again, we can look at the function model. We can find that uh, with the knowledge acquired in the pre-training, uh, they can perform different tasks without further training for many minutes. Um, this makes us uh, this makes us to ask um, this makes us to uh, explore a new topic whether we can uh, simply prompt uh, foundation model to uh, generate graphic layout. We find there are several challenges. Um, the first one is uh, how to leverage design knowledge encoded in foundation model, even if we know there are design knowledge. Um, the second, uh, to, to, for this task, we protocol the in input output characters module um, to, for, to solve this challenge. Um, the next, um, the other challenge here is how to make foundation model understand different tasks and domains. For example, uh, I want the model to know I, I want a document layout, not an uh, Android layout. So uh, to solve these challenges, uh, we propose the dynamic demonstration collection model here. Um, for the input output paraphrase module, um, we formulate input constraints as a sequence. Um, this is to follow the success of previous studies introduced before. And this is also to uh, align with typical input formats of foundation models. Uh, for, uh, for output, the layout, we formulate it as a HTML code. Um, it is because um, HTML code is a systematic and a structured way um, that can describe any type of uh, graphic design. And also, uh, we, we think foundation model might have designed latent knowledge in the form of, this, of, of HTML code uh, because the training data contains um, a lot of HTML pages. Um, for the dynamic demonstration selection, um, given a user constraint, we select the N, we select the N uploaded data from the training set as a demonstration. Um, here, the distance is mirrored between user constraints. Um, this is to uh, find the most relevant context and also Two more things. and also to help formation model better uh, comprehend user constraints. Okay. Maybe speak a bit louder. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so, um, of course, we also include layout in the party domain um, in order to have foundation model better capture the characteristics of the party domain. Um, putting all this together, we get the um, final framework. Um, first, um, there is a preamble which um, briefly describes the basic information of the task. And then uh, we have the uh, demonstration retrieved by the technology mentioned above. Um, and we uh, concatenate the test input. Uh, note that here, uh, for the other demonstration, the input constraints and output layout follows the uh, particular format we have we have given in the input output format um, paraphr input output format paraphrase stage. When we send uh, when we send all, all, all of this to foundation model, um, uh, the foundation model gives the desired layout. Um, with the format of HTML code. Um, here are results. We compare our method, which is a training free one with all the baseline, uh, which are training phase one. Um, we can find that our method um, achieves comparable performance on both tasks and even better than uh, baseline on some tasks. And another interesting thing is, um, although HTML code is primarily used for web UI in practical scenarios, uh, we achieve good performance with it on mobile UI documents and posters. We um, we also make studies of uh, data size. 
and for the business like uh, they have former class class, um, they are training based method. Um, we change the size of training data. Um, for our method, the prompter is a training free method. So we change the size of retrieval pool. Um, here is the FIU score of different methods um, on the, with different data size. Uh, we can find um, to achieve comparable performance, layout prompter use much less data than layout former plus plus. Um, for example, um, 500 data um, is enough for um, layout prompter to achieve good performance. Um, but the layout former uh, layout, layout prompter, but uh, layout former plus plus need more than uh, 3,000 data to achieve a good performance. Um, as a summary, um, in the deep dives, uh, we start from the recognized strength of foundation model, and then we uh, propose we propose new method um, inspired by the foundation model to make achievements in graphic layout generation. Uh, here we uh, first consider the black family of foundation model, and uh, this motivates us to use sequence and unified input output presentation. Uh, which makes us to make a unified framework to handle different layout generation tasks. And the second uh, strength we consider is the uh, sharp perception of user intent. Um, this, um, with that, uh, we think we, uh, we, we, we think about taking foundation model as a translator. Um, this makes us to propose a new random way to control layout generation. The third strength we consider is the extensive and cross disciplinary knowledge included in the foundation model. Uh, with, that, uh, with, uh, with, with that, uh, we explore how to uh, prompt the foundation model. And finally, we propose a data efficient and training free generation framework. Um, in the next, I want to um, discuss, discuss, discuss about the future, how to put the boundary of the current technologies and design creation. Um, the first interesting thing in my mind is, I think there is a debate on layout applications. Um, one method is to represent layout as a sequence, uh, which takes the object as a unit and generate object level attributes. Um, but uh, such tech, with such technology, we should rely on numeric understanding ability on which is even difficult, which is difficult even for foundation models. Um, for example, uh, if we want to know whether two elements are aligned in, in a layout sequence, we need to calculate whether its um, top and the left coordinates are the same. Um, another way to represent layout is to uh, use it as a raster image, uh, which takes a pix pixel as unit and generates pixel information. Um, with such approach, we rely, we actually rely on visual understanding ability, uh, which seems to be more intuitive and uh, uh, mirrors uh, human behavior. Uh, for example, think about we have such a layout image, we can just scan it and we know whether two elements are aligned. We do not need to calculate whether the two elements are the same. Um, the first approach actually uh, produces an uh, edible layout. Edible design, but the second approach um, produced um, non edible design. So, most of the work currently is focused on the first approach, which models layout as a sequence, uh, just like the three work I shared before. Um, but personally, I think if we could introduce um, raster image information into the model, we could uh, have more interesting findings. The next interesting thing is about how to go from generation to editing. Um, here in the example, uh, actually, a uh, user uh, may have many, many uh, requirements after she gets the first results. For example, the user may first um, re request the system to produce a, a shopping page. After getting that, she may want to uh, put more product item, items and even more, even want to add a description for each product and may. Uh, try to change the way how the uh, how this product are arranged. So uh, editing is uh, crucial for practical use, but um, it is rarely studied. Um, I think um, there are three challenges here. Um, the first one is uh, we uh, for editing we we actually need a more 
strong generation capability of a living model for um, their own generation. And also, the data collection management method is much more difficult for editing compared to the generation past. And also, we may need new learning objectives and evaluation because um, the editing results are diverse and uh, personalized. Um, a next, uh, a next interesting thing in my mind is about how to go beyond the graphic designs. Um, here are some questions. Uh, here are some questions. Um, actually, there are many designs um, beyond uh, graphic design, like uh, circle design, mechanical design, and archi architectural design. Um, so, can these designs uh, also be part of the bioinformation models as a graphic model design? And will there be a model that can handle all, all these designs in a biosimple model? Um, before sharing some personal views for these questions, I want to first introduce um, some uh, observations. Um, the third one is actually the, for designs in other fields, there are attempts to formulate them as systems. Uh, for example, safety in mechanical design and health plan in architectural design. Um, another observation is actually different design fields share um, some common design principles. Um, for example, um, balance and symmetry is important to all types of design. Um, for mechanical design, balance and weight distributions uh, ensure the stability. And for architectural design, symmetry um, often is often used to provide a sense of formality. Um, there are also design principles such as uh, flexibility, adaptability, and uh, minimalism. They are all shared across different designs. And uh, uh, however, uh, I also find that um, each design field has its unique needs and domain specific knowledge. Um, for example, graphic design. In graphic design, we would expect it should be uh, aesthetically appealing and uh, convey information effectively. And for circular design, uh, we want to optimize its wellness, congestion, and uh, density. Um, for, actual, for architecture design, uh, we would expect a precise relationship among architecture components. So, um, my personal view for this question, um, for, for the first question, uh, can designs in other fields also be powered as a moment by foundation model? Um, I think it, it is promising, um, especially when we do not have millions of design data. Um, the risk is that um, the, the first one is um, um, converting the design into different formats uh, will have a uh, foundation model to process them uh, accurately. And the, and the different format has been studied by some works recently. And uh, uh, the second risk is that the complex design knowledge might have been encoded in foundation model in some formats, just like the HTML code for uh, graphic design. And uh, the last one, I think it's important to consider the domain specific knowledge when we want to um, use foundation model. And um, my personal view for the last question, uh, will there be a model can handle designs in all the fields um, I think uh, it is possible, but there are challenges in design creation. Um, the first challenge here is the uh, complexity of data types. Um, unlike language, uh, which uh, mainly deal with um, text, uh, in design fields, there are many, many data types like uh, 2D graphics that they are being introduced, and also 3D structures and uh, uh, netlist in the circuit design. And another challenge is that we need to carefully uh, balance subjectivity and objectivity. Um, for example, a, a, a mechanical design is considered more objectivity, um, but a graphic design might be more subjective. Um, okay, uh, that's all for this task. If you are interested in our work, please visit our page for uh, more work about graphic level generation. Uh, we also have work about capturing uh, characteristics of graphic layout. And uh, um, in, the, in our uh, early work, we also focused on uh, human computer in interaction perspective on AI power by creation. Thank you.
Okay, uh, thanks, Sijiao, uh, uh, for the wonderful talk. Uh, we are going to take a uh, you know, couple of questions from the audience right now. Uh, any question? Okay, yeah, easy. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, in the first work, you mentioned that you used some heuristic tools to synthesize the training data. I wonder um, how much data is required to achieve a satisfactory uh, performance? Uh, does the uh, diversity of the amount of the data matter? Um, yes, uh, we use one million data for the training. Uh, we also try two million data, but I but we think one million data is enough for this task. And the diversity is actually very important. So we have many versions of heuristic rules to um, improve the performance. So how, how did you uh, design the heuristic rules? Did you like uh, ask the suggestions from the designers or you just come up with them by yourself? Uh, we have a very, very numerous designers to improve the heuristic rules. Uh, we will uh, give them uh, some examples just like from, from our model and they give us feedbacks. So it's also um, an interesting field that we design. Okay, uh, other question? Okay, good. Thank you so much. I think it's a good design for the field. I just have a question that how to leverage the design you can come from different forms of designs and ideas can you can share? Um, what design you can see? You just say in your work that uh, there are some sub design you can see common from different aspects of design that are here in models and surface and graphic layouts. So is there any idea about how to just find the common design you can inside and just bring them all, all together into a unified composition model? Um, um this is very um uh, actually a difficult problem uh, because I'm working on it. <laughs> um, I can share my um, personal approach. Actually, um, I want to work on all of these designs one by one. Um, I worked on graphic design in the last year. I will work on, on mechanical design this year. I, <laughs> I hope I can find a way to unify all of these designs by such hard work. Thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sure. So I have uh, I have been working on CAD programs myself, and I found it interesting that you mentioned they have a big form of OCR, and also I'm interested in one specific problem that I have encountered in uh, when I try to look at like some part of model standard CAD design. So it is pneumonia for us. I mean, uh, if we for example if we ask the uh, JPK company JPK to play two box, and one box is just as uh, only another box, which means the two surfaces will be like exactly uh, aligned, like they fit uh, each other, fit with each other. So it requires, for example, the uh, lower surface of the upper box should be like 10, and then the upper surface of the lower box should be 10, or in some other system, it should be like 10.1. So uh, my observation is that although it is sometimes to say here, uh, general position, for example, the smaller box is upper, the bigger box is down, uh, but it can, it always has a number of problems because it cannot pr uh, produce some precise uh, numbers that will like achieve my goal. So is there any uh, problem uh, like this occurs, for example, in 2D design or design space because there are some uh, smart like solutions? Um... Actually, uh, I think it's also, uh, we also have uh, this problem in 2D design. So uh, this is uh, why I mentioned this based on uh, the presentation. Um, the, the problem you, you mentioned is it because uh, we always model layout or 3D design as a sequence. Um, but um, as I just mentioned, I think uh, we should uh, have method to uh, introduce the, the information of raster image or raster uh, 3D designs to the uh, to the to the process when we want to create this in processing sequence. Um, but I think uh, GPT is a closed uh, model. It's uh, we we may choose some uh, open model to solve this problem. Okay. Uh, 
for how to uh, interpret uh, raster image, raster, raster of AD device in terms of this language. Oh, I have two head questions. Like, can I ask also? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, it is like, if, even if we do represent this raster image, the problem of numerical theory is because, for example, in the last image, how can we tell that these three contents are aligned or centered or not? So, if we do want it to be centered, then it could, and for example, if we send the raster image, how can we assure that those images also are aligned by, by centering or by other groups? So this is my question. I think this is kind of a common problem that uh, in our chapter one and in this uh, graph. Um, I think there is no answer for this. Yeah, we should have a uh, you know yeah, um, poster session to you know discuss. Uh, okay. Uh, any other question? By the way, uh, no, no more. Okay. Um, maybe uh, I have one uh, question to you, Shichao. Uh, so you have been working mainly on the you know layered part of the you know, design. What are, what do you think about you know the generating content together with layout information? Do you have any, you know, kind of, you know, potential ideas, like, you know, generating, say, raster image together with a layered component? <laughs> any, <laughs> um, any perspective? Um, I actually I have some um failures when we when I want to okay <laughs> when I want to make it. Uh, I can share some experience. Um, I think <laughs> there was um. Thing in the most typical things because we don't have such data. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, any other question from the audience? No? Okay. Then let's thank the speaker again. Yeah, so we are going to have 30 minutes coffee break from now on. Uh, I don't know where the coffee will be served, but maybe you guys can figure out outside. All right, uh, see you uh, in 30 minutes. Okay, maybe I need to first move this screen to the other uh, display. All right, hold on a second. Okay. 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 Yeah, your screen. You see my slides? Yeah, I can see your slide here. Let me just uh, set up the uh, projector. Yeah, it's working now. All right. Okay. Good. We so, are in three minutes. And and in the beginning, I will give an introduction. Okay. No problem. Maybe we can show something is there. Show the face. Maybe he is turning on the camera or no? I don't know. Did I open my camera? Uh, you don't need, but if you want, yeah, we oh, yeah, okay. can show your face. Okay, maybe I will say hello to audience. Yeah, yeah. A second. <laughs> and then close it. All right. A second. Uh, I don't know if we can arrange the one. Side by side. Speaker. Then present this here. Ah. Yeah, working. That's great. Great. Yeah. Uh, sorry, we don't have a camera for the uh, being here. Ah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have, I don't know what, roughly 20 to 30 people in the room, maybe. Okay. 20 people, yeah. okay. Yeah.
Okay, shall we begin? Well, yeah, let's start the, uh, the rest of the session. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, we are pleased to have Professor Zhu Huilian as the third keynote speaker. Uh, Zhu Huilian is an associate professor in Peking University. His research interests include computer graphics, computer vision, and artificial intelligence. He has been working on the topic of font synthesis in the last few years. He has published more than 90 academic papers in top-tier journals and conferences. He was the principal investigator of several projects funded by National Natural Science Foundation of China, Beijing Nova Program of Science and Technology, etc., and have led his group to successfully develop two practical systems for the generation of Chinese fonts. Let's welcome Zhu Hui. Hello, everyone. Okay, thank you for this introduction. Okay, <clears throat> hello, everyone. Um, I'm Zhou Huilian uh, from Peking University, and I'm glad to present my talk for synthesis where, let me stop the video, okay. Okay, for synthesis uh, um, where deep generating models in this workshop, and sorry that because of the visa issue, I cannot be uh, there in my in person, so I need to give this talk online. And thanks for the invitation from the organizers. Okay, we know tax taxes are everywhere. Everywhere, such computer forms are widely used in our daily lives, appearing in books, and newspapers, uh, print advertisements, uh, social media, and more. And but however, three uh, representations can be quite diverse, uh, from two dimensional to three dimensional, and from images to graphics, and from static to dynamic. So, when to create a computer forms? How to create a computer forms? Traditionally, you have to um, first spend several months maybe learning how to make the computer forms uh, step by step. And then, okay, uh, and then you, you need to draw or write all characters out. Uh, at least you need to draw them out and also uh, or write them out and package them into the form library like this. Yeah, so this is a process of uh, of making a computer forms, but for English, yeah, it seems a piece of cake, okay? Only uh, 52 uh, letters, right? Mm. So taking maybe several hours or days, you can create an English form. But for Chinese, it has become um, tougher over the numbers of uh, characters included in the font library increased. So let me take uh, Chinese fonts as an example. Mm, the official character set to be 1930, uh, 2022 consists of 87,887 Chinese characters. <clears throat> so let me give you a, a brief uh, 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 examples of how many Chinese characters are there in a, a form in the Chinese form. So, what's more, many Chinese characters are are really complicated. The shape of these characters are really complicated. Here are some examples of those uh, complicated Chinese characters. So we also need to keep the style consistency in the in the form. So therefore, making a complete Chinese font library is usually uh, an impossible mission for ordinary people. Uh, usually a uh, Chinese character form may take uh, like four years for the group uh, with some with several skilled font designers. So our goal is to create computer forms easily, given a small number of grief written or designed by the user or font designer. Using our system, a font library, uh, including maybe uh, handwriting forms, printing forms, calligraphic forms, uh, forms with spe special effects. Uh, in those desired input font styles with arbit arbitrary large numbers of characters can be generated automatically, including Chinese forms, English forms, etc. <clears throat> so, for example, fitting like uh, 100 characters uh, written by the Asian Chinese calligraphy, 
Um, so they can obviously they cannot. Uh, but he cannot write other characters, and uh, they haven't write before, right? But using our system, we <clears throat> we will be able to automatically synthesize the glyph in the calligraphy's writing style, uh, for all these uh, Chinese characters. So furthermore, we expect that the system can also be used to flexibly add in forms by modifying their form attributes. Um, however, like a decade before, even through the deep learning has uh, made significant progress in tests like object detection, image recognition, and classification. Very few people uh, who have imagined that a generative, generative text could be effectively accomplished using neural networks. But in, in recent years, we know that um, with the development of the GAN, the VAE, and artificial models, more and more researchers have began to apply uh, deep, neural, uh, deep neural networks for generating images and graphics or videos. Uh, so um, so we, we, we can summarize those kind of works like this. Okay, so we also we, we can uh, summarize the existing forms of input and outputs. So different combinations of these uh, forms uh, uh, so can, can have uh, various uh, applications, including the well-known test to image, image to image, sketch to sketch, and also we can have a, a test to grief and grief to grief, and so on. So deep generative models can uh, have uh, thoroughly uh, revolutionized <coughs> the traditional paradigms of the stream modeling and image synthesis, so achieving many astonishing results. So in this talk, I focus on how to uh, synthesize glyphs via deep generative models. So as we know, uh, the mainstream deep generated models might include auto encoder, VAE game, and auto autogra models, including transformer and um, flow based generated models, diffusion models, and physical uh, physics based generated models such as NERV, STF, etc., and also hybrid methods. So due to the time constraint, I, I think many most of them are very familiar with those uh, generating models. So I, I will not elaborate on each of them. So using those deep generating models, uh, impressive performance has been achieved for general purpose of image uh, synthesis. But uh, currently problems still exist in some real applications such as uh, form synthesis. <coughs> so there are some major problems uh, that is, uh, the resolution of grief images synthesized by existing models is relatively low. And so many critical local details are missing. And for Chinese griefs with very complicated shapes, some strokes are often incorrect or missing. And how to directly synthesize Chinese vector forms is still an ongoing and challenging problem. Uh, due to the uh, irregular data structures of those uh, vector glyphs. Uh, due to the above mentioned uh, challenges exist, uh, existing in glyphs, so even using the most advanced large scale multi -mo multi model uh, uh, model uh, generated models such as um, like Dali Yi, Party, and Wen Xin Yi Yan, etc., and the issues of Quantum accuracy and style controllability in glyphs synthesis uh, cannot be satisfactorily uh, addressed. So, in in our institute, our uh, Wanshan Institute of Peking uh, of Computer Technology in Peking University, I lead a group working on form synthesis for more than ten years. So now I want to uh, I want to briefly introduce the major progress made each year in the last decade and that. <clears throat> let, let, uh, let us uh, just uh, review those uh, history uh, in, in the last 10 years. And actually, 10 years before, we, we did not use any uh, neural networks because uh, uh, since the results are generated by, the, uh, by those neural networks, it are really, are really unsatisfactory. Okay, so we might use some traditional computer uh, graphics, computer graphics technologies. So like in, in, 20, in 2012, um, we proposed an automatic stream murphy and form style fusion algorithm for Chinese characters based on as rigid as possible interpolation and non-rigid point set registration. And 
so and in, in 2013, we developed an automatic Chinese phone generation system based on optimized component assembly strat strategy and capable of automatically generating a complete Chinese phone library from uh, like 639 input grief images uh, carefully selected by, uh, by, by us. <clears throat> and, and then we also released, uh, released uh, here we also release a website. Our website, website. Uh, this is a uh, this is our website and uh, a free and uh, a publicly accessible online platform for creating Chinese character Chinese lab uh, Chinese phone libraries, in you know, enabling uh, ordinary people to easily create their own handwriting Chinese character forms. So through this platform, we have collect huge amount of handwriting data, a uh, Chinese uh. Of especially Chinese characters are uh, in the last ten years, and we also have we also propose the algorithms by exploring the uh, aesthetic uh, <clears throat> aesthetic rules of Chinese calligraphy. We automatically can we can automatically evaluate the visual appear appearance of Chinese glyphs and use these to enhance the glyph uh, synthesis result. Uh, in 2016, uh, we proposed a style learning-based Chinese handwriting form synthesis system. And for the first time, the handwriting form library in a user's personal style with arbit arbitrary large numbers of Chinese characters can be generated automatically. And before that, actually, this is a, a really challenging problem and cannot and haven't been solved uh, by uh, uh, before before. 2016, and for the, for the first time, we have presented such a, uh, uh, impressive results. So specifically in this work, we utilize uh, utilize some shallow artificial neural network, not deep deep neural network, and we just use a very shallow uh, AN and to precisely model stroke structural style and stroke shape style respectively. And then in 2017, we, the first time we used the deep generating model. And, and this year also the very famous work Pixel to Pixel uh, uh, was published. So it <clears throat> was reported uh, actually. And so we, we also use this, the, the similar uh, uh, framework um, but <clears throat> use some modification. So we, we, we propose an end-to-end -end Chinese phone generation system based on deep generative adversarial network. And the key idea is to Integrate a new phone style feature reconstruction module uh, into into the pixel to pixel framework, making it one of the earliest work to use a deep generating model for Chinese phone generation test. So as we can see, there still exist many artifacts in synthesizer now, and here you can see a lot of artifacts. And then in twenty in twenty uh in in twenty. <coughs> 18, we propose the Chinese <coughs> fun and interpretation methods based on manifold learning and deep neural networks, ensuring both grief correctness and inter 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 abilities of phone styles. And actually, from then, from 2017, we all use the deep generated model to solve those problems. When we use scan, transformer, and, and also VAE and diffusion model. And then in twenty nineteen, we published a uh, talk uh, talk papers. We proposed ArgisNet, and for the first time, achieving automatic generation of arbitrary large scale artificial uh, uh, artistic style form, and based on one stage field shop learning. The core idea involves style content decoupling and local data augmentation. A major advantage of this method include minimal training sample requirement and since only since only transfer of texture effects and and phone styles and the high quality of uh, synthesized grief images <laughs> and in the same year we also developed a structural information guided Chinese phone generation model based on deep static networks and the core idea involves a two stage generation process and a strategy that's super, super, super 
spreading trajectory and outer contours. And in 2020, we propose a proposed attribute to font that utilize a visual feature transformation model, an attribute attention model, and, and a semi a supervised learning mechanism to automatically generate fonts with personalized style based on user given font attribute values. And, and, and the next year, and we, we developed a font synthesized method based on deep reinforcement, reinforcement learning. The key idea is to apply the deep reinforcement learning to obtain the TPS interpolation parameters for strokes. Uh, scaling turn transformation in different styles, and then recover the uh, uh, the rendering rendering details. <clears throat> and in twenty twenty and twenty twenty two, we propose a content aware layout generation network, uh, which take uh, grid images and their corresponding text as input and synthesize the uh, uh, aesthetic uh, layout for them automatically. And last year, we adopted static uh, transformers for high quality, high resolution Chinese grief image synthesized. Uh, and the idea is to apply the uh, <clears throat> parallel transformers to avoid, uh, to avoid the accumulation of the prediction errors and utilize the serial, serial transformers, another one, another transformer to enhance the quality of synthesized strokes. And and recently, in this year, we propose a QT form, an efficient quant tree-based diffusion model specifically designed to handle the test of efficient few shot form synthesis. And the uh, key idea is to design a sparse a quarter tree-based grief representation to reduce the complexity of the representation space with a quote uh, a quote uh, tree-based uh, representation. So. In this manner, our QT form compared to the existing approaches can, uh, can generate high resolution grief images with super, uh, superior, uh, super quality and more visual pleasing details. So meanwhile, significantly reducing uh, both parameter size and the computational cost. Okay, as mentioned before, as to, up to now, the grief image synthesized tests can be well resolved. And since the vector form are more widely used in computers, so is it possible and how to automatically generate a, a vector form? So first, let me look at uh, let's let's look at the difference between the grid images and vector grids. Most existing form generation models only aim to uh, generate grid images. Uh, also, uh, most of our work are also focused on <coughs> generating grid images. But <coughs> as we can see. The details become a blurry, a blurry, and when we zoom in, we can see uh many details are blurry. Uh, so well, our our aim is to directly synthesize the uh, uh, vector forms, uh, which has a scale invariant representations. That is, if you zoom in, and you can see the uh always sharped details. So. Also, more well, uh, more well, you can we can see that vector grids can have a significantly less storage requirement compared to the electrolyzed uh, uh, grid images. Like a uh, uh, Chinese phone library, maybe containing uh, seven thousand characters, already have two megabit. Okay, and if you, uh, if you if you saw the, uh, one K plus one K grid images, uh. A uh, BMP image file it will occupy like one MB. So, key challenges of this uh, vector form synthesis are threefold, uh, including unstructured data format and randomness of the human design. And um, for example, if you have the same curve in the uh, in the grief grief, and the <coughs> actually designer can have a different ways to represent this curve. And also are some common requirements of the grief uh, synthesis as I mentioned before. So to <clears throat> okay to summarize, uh, there are two possible ways to address the problems of the vector form synthesis. The first one is to directly generate vector griefs, and the other one is to synthesize grief images and then vectorize them. So in this talk, I will briefly introduce this full work, our recent recent work. 
and using our latest method, we can generate a uh, very high quality vector uh, glyphs. And the first one is a deep vector form published in Sequel of Asia 2022. And the method is, as we can see here, the method is capable of directly synthesizing high quality vector forms, giving a few reference vector glyph as input. Our method can directly synthesize the whole vector form in the same style. And the key ideas are threefold. At first, we designed a dual modality uh, learning strategy which utilize both image aspect and uh, uh, sequence aspect features of forms to synthesize vector glyphs. Second, we adopt the techn techniques of the image synthesize, uh, a sequence, a sequence modeling and differential electoralization and to ex ex exhaustively explore the, explore the uh, dual modality information. Uh, so we provide a new generative paradigm <coughs> to handle and structure the any sample possible synthesized result to get the optimal one, uh, which is further refined under the guidance of the generated structure data. And why it is complicated? The problem is complicated. So this is an uh, illustration of our data structure. Uh, so you can see the table. This table shows the drawing command of a, uh, co commands of a grief D uh, and using these relative coordinates. The left figures, uh, demonstrate the grief shapes and the <coughs> argument points of the drawing the uh, comments using the uh, 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 absolute 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 uh, coordinate. So M, L, C, and denotes move, line, curve, uh, commands respectively. Also the crosswise and the anti crosswise order uh, determine how to fill the outline. And this is the overview of our method. And our model is designed to fully exploit the dual modality features, which are first project into the latest style code, and afterwards we synthesize the uh, target <coughs> target images and commands, uh, respectively. The differential differentiable uh rasterizer look status is employed to align the synthesized vector data with the images. So here are some uh, technical details. Okay, we use the CM, LSTM, and we also use the modality fusion, use the concat and 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 full connect full connection. Okay, and we also use uh employ the KR loss to normalize the star latent space, and we use the Gaussian uh, mixture models for the coordinate prediction. And we also also use uh, propose a neural differentiable uh, rasterizer, uh, uh, brief as NDR, NDR, because uh, we know we introduce the uh, MDN to represent the loss, and so inevitably, in inevitably brings a local location a lo <coughs> location shift and made the generated vector glyphs looks and coordinates. So we use this uh we use a proposed lexterizer to make the direct alignments between the grief images. Uh, uh so uh, here are some examples of the uh NDR outputs when we fit it with the synthesized drawing commands during training. Uh, and the whole loss function of our uh, main model is formulated as the sum of the image reconstruction loss command class prediction loss and command coordinate prediction loss, neural uh, rasterization like reconstruction loss and the KL loss for the uh, latent space. And during the inf inference uh, phase, uh, during a stage, and we proposed a new generation of paradise. Uh, first generate the grave images and the latent uh, Gaussian uh, distributions of the of distributions of the vector glyphs based on the reference glyph, and then generate uh candidate vector glyphs to sample. And next, uh, we use the DVG to DVG to uh, fix the uh, instruction types and the quality and the quantities of these uh, vector glyphs, and adjusting the coordinate to align the candidate vector glyphs with the uh, glyph images. 
And finally, Slagler Vector Graves with the best alignment as the final result. So let's see the experimental results. And given a few vector grips as reference, our model. So our model uh, can synthesize the whole vector forms automatically. And with the forms are synthesized by few sort learning, and more vector forms can be generated by smooth interpolations in the uh, star latent space of our model. And the interpolate, interpolate, uh, interpolated vector forms are maxed by the uh, rect a dashed uh, rectangle. And we also, we can pair our methods with three reason, recently po uh, proposed approach. And we can see that uh, our method significantly outperforms other existing approach. And these are abrasion studies, uh, abrasion studies uh, verified our the effectiveness of method, and we also compare our methods with uh, some recent <coughs> with with the uh, uh with the Adobe Image Trace Tracer AIT, and we sending our high resolution images <coughs> synthesized images into the AIT, and then we can see that uh the Adobe Image Tracer uh, still can have uh, uh some problems like the OS 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 moves the uh, Local details and also, um, so many details are missing. Okay, so but our method, the synthesized vector glyphs, uh, of our method can have a very sharp details, right? But our method still can have some problems. Uh, still have some limitations, Ex especially when handling glyphs that contain extremely thin, uh, strokes. Uh, and also losing smoothness after refinement. And the refinement process uh, is uh, somehow time consuming and also is, uh, they, they still have some problems like always, always, always smoothing and uh, also uh, the quality is uh, <coughs> heavily dependent by the quality of the synthesized images. So can we, can we directly, uh, directly synthesize high quality vector grip without refinement? And here comes another work. Published in 3PR uh, 2023. And the motivations are twofold. First, the original deep vector form without refinement suffers from low. And second, the original deep vector form with refinement has both over sm uh, smoothness. Uh, like here, we <coughs> mark out by the green circle and the under smoothness, see the blue circles. And propose deep learning a uh, deep vector form v two successively adjust these problems. And here are three major contributions. Uh, first we developed a transform transformer based generating model accomplished by a rela relaxation representation of the vector outlines. Uh, and second we propose to sample. Uh, <coughs> ag aglias points in addition to control points to precisely align the generality and the target outlines. And finally, we designed a content-based self-refinement module uh, to fully utilize the content, uh, context information to further remove the artifacts. And here uh, is a pipeline of our deep vector for V2, and the inputs are reference glyphs uh, in both uh, raster images and the uh, vector outlines. <coughs> So in the uh, figure eight, a uh, subfigure eight, um, this is a dual, uh, this is a dual branch architecture based on transformers and CNs, uh, um, to synthesize the target vector grid, and the uh, subfigure B shows the uh, shows the self refinement modules, uh, which is designed to remove the artifacts in the initially uh, synthesized vector grids, and the uh, subfigure. C, uh, in addition to a control points, uglier uglier points are sampled to align the synthesized glyph with the corresponding target, while the bizarre curve alignment loss. And so uh, due to the time limit, we did we, we don't want to go to more details. Okay, and uh, this is a uh, how this uh relaxation representation works. 
and also we we need to sample some aggregate <coughs> uh, oxalian points in addition to the control points. Uh, like here's also how we we can sample those uh, uh additional points. And we also this is a context based self refinement modules. And here we show how you can further remove the uh, artifacts by self refinement instead of the uh, refinement uh, uh, additional refinement stack using the div vg uh, etc. And here's the last functions we used. This is a Bayesian study uh, results uh, verified verifying the effectiveness of the proposed relaxation representation, the Bayesian curve alignment loss, and the self refinement module. Let's see. Okay. Uh, we also compare our our methods with other approaches. Our, uh, as we can see, our method achieved uh achieve uh, <coughs> obvious advantages in generating high quality English vector forms with various styles. And we can also apply our method to generate Chinese vector forms. And but for this work, we, we can already handle some very simple Chinese characters. We just select uh, like 100, uh, 100 or 20, uh, 100 or 200 sim uh, Chinese characters with some simple, sim relatively simple shape. Uh, actually, currently we cannot, still cannot directly uh, synthesize Chinese characters with very complicated shapes. And qualitative results also Quantitative results also prove the superior, superiority of the proposed method. And we can also, also implement the style interpolations for both English or Chinese fonts. And also apply our method for font generation, few sort font generation. And uh, also can apply this Font generation for uh, Chinese vector fonts. Okay, this is a demo of the generated uh, <coughs> Chinese vector fonts. See, there are difference against the uh, uh, images synthesized by uh, those generated models. They are actually they are <coughs> the writing sequence, drawing sequence, basically. Okay, uh, I will briefly introduce this work. Uh, uh, vector form uh, SDF, uh, also published in CVPR 2023. As we know, implicit shape representation like SDF has been proved effectively, effective in shape modeling and analysis. Uh, therefore, we would like to see whether it is possible to reconstruct and synthesize high quality vector forms using SDF. A key idea are twofold. Uh, first, we design a new impre uh, implicit shape representation, which can be directly converted into a com uh, common, uh, co commonly used vector form for maps, uh, con consisting of the Bezier curve and lines. Um, second, we use the true SDF values as a strong separation, a separation instead of all the raster images. And this is a pipeline of our method. And here I saw some formulas regarding how to compare the SDF. Uh, SDF. Mm. One second. Uh, formulas regarding how to use the uh, uh, how to compute the SD, SDF for the given glyph that consists of better curves. Okay. Uh, I think may, may, I, I think we are very familiar with these uh, formulas so i won't i don't want to go to more details and so due to the complex uh, gradient back propagation process so directly uh, calculating the real uh, sided uh, distance from the sampling point to the uh, parabolic uh, curves using these formulas is inflexible when training our neural networks so therefore we design a uh, <clears throat> Uh, we we try we design a pseudo, uh, distance function to address this problem. And we uh SDF uh, SDF can be easily uh localized 
let's translate let's translate into the grief image like this using this function and like this we can easily uh, convert it into a uh, grief images and also to fully exploit the grief vector information we repeat the above calculation of all a grief position and a uniformly sample points a uniformly sample points near the grief contours to obtain the grief SDF and contour contour SDFs uh, respectively. And this is a grief SDF loss and the contour SDF loss. And also we use a regular regularization loss, which are assembled into the complete uh, loss function. And in order to synthesize uh, vector forms for practical uses, and we need to convert the parameters of the hyperbolic curves generated by our STF decoders into the uh, <coughs> Bezier curves. Uh, Bezier curves. So here shows how we can uh, comp assemble those uh, uh, elements into into this uh, into a complete uh, outlines consisting of the many consisting of many Bezier curves. Uh, the Bayesian studies uh, results verify the effect effectiveness of the proposed SDF losses and the contour SDF loss. <clears throat> so here are more ablation study results, and uh, both quantitatively and uh, qualitatively. And here we saw the compilations of uh, different methods for grief reconstruction. So as we can see, our method uh, can recover more details more details and the quality is, is uh, also better. And to further demonstrate the potential of a, a vec, a vec form SDF for vector form generation, we direct, directly directly extend uh, extend the popular few shot style transfer text from the image domain to vector domain. And and see this is an end to end trainable uh, because the proposed uh, vector form SDF is differentiable. <laughs> Oh, here are some results of our method. Clearly, how to perform the defect form. Uh, uh, due to the time limit, I will quickly go through the, our recent work, and this work is under still under review. And the key idea, key motivation of this work is that uh, is that um, if we can generate high resolution, for example, one K plus one K, grief images like this high resolution grief images. So uh, many well preserved local details can be <coughs> still uh, can be included in these images. So if such kind of grief image can be synthesized, then it is possible to generate high quality vector forms, which is indeed indistinguishable indis indis from those manually produced by the personal uh, professional uh, form designers like this one. And okay, the proposed HF. HFH form um to handle the test of the few shot uh few shot <coughs> few shot Chinese form synthesized with higher resolution, higher quality, faster speed and higher resolution. <coughs> okay. Uh, so taking a subset of the character in the desired style as input, our method can output high fidelity high resolution grief images of the remaining characters, which then can be uh, vectorized into the high quality vector forms. And like this one, okay, the proposed method can be used like a few short personalized uh, form uh, generation and also the artistic uh, grief images synthesis and uh, with higher quality and faster speed and higher resolution compared to existing uh, especially diffusion based model <clears throat> and this is the overview of the methods uh, uh, we have uh, three stages and um, uh, all based on <laughs> diffusion models and we use the uh, diffusion model to generate a grief in high quality uh, low first generate a low resolution uh, but high fidelity grief image and then use a, a, a diffusion model to generate a high resolution uh, grief images uh, using the style, style, uh, style, uh, guided, style guided, actually style guided diffusion model, uh, and also we 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 use the uh, 
a teacher student models to 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 let the uh, one step sampling become possible to speed up the speed up the uh, model and we also integrate uh, integrate the uh, prior no prior knowledge of Chinese characters into this model uh, to enhance the quality and I won't I don't want to go to more details okay here are some uh, experiment, experimental results and this is the setting of our experiments and here are some qualitative uh, results comparison results obviously our method performs much better compared to existing approach and you can see that uh, intuitively from these uh, figures we we can uh, our our methods can handle different types of the phone uh phone styles <coughs> and still uh show some very impressive results uh you can zoom in to to see this okay and also here are more results and we can see that our proposed method was considered considerably well when only 10 reference script images are fit into the model and moreover we can see that our one step uh, distilled models can still faithfully mimic the output of the multi-step teacher models so uh, while the teacher model does not produce valid result in the one step sampling but our student models can do that in the one step sampling and providing uh, proving the effectiveness of our design, okay. And this figure shows that our model is able to extract and recover style details from high resolution style reference. Uh, and compared to our general purpose image uh, super resolution models. And for this figure, we can see that uh, uh, very high quality uh, vector glyphs can be generated compared to the ground truth almost a similar numbers of control points and the high quality of the uh, glyphs. And actually we also conduct, conduct a lot of uh, many user studies, uh, uh, including user study for ordinary peoples and also uh, professional phone designers. And so this suggests that our generated this result suggests that our generated vector forms are significantly better than those uh from the compared methods and are even compatible to designer created ground truth vector forms. And we may, our method can also be applied for the test of the artistic uh artistic grief image synthesize, achieving a better performance compared to existing approaches. Okay, so let's go to the discussion pack. Uh, the, <clears throat> so our, our we have we have been working on the phone synthesis topic for more than ten years, but that still exists some unsolved challenging problems. For example, how to handle the complex complex vector glyphs. For example, Chinese glyphs. Can we directly synthesize uh, the vector glyphs, uh, and and such achieving the style transfer and the style editing for Chinese vector forms. And also how to incorporate with a, a large language model to make the phone generation tests uh, easier and and also more user friendly. And so, yeah, that's all. Okay, so uh, finally, I would like to thank those amazing graduate students I supervised in the last decade, including Yi Zhi, uh, Zhe Qin, uh, Bo Jun, uh, Yu Qin, and Li Hua. Okay, that's all. Uh, that's all for my talk. Thank you. And and any questions? Hello. Thanks, Professor Rian. Uh, we are gonna okay. um, uh, running. We are running out of time. But um, okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, is there any uh, audience asking for a question? Maybe only a single question. No. Okay, maybe uh, uh, we don't have a specific question, but okay. Later, yeah, the audience, uh, yeah, maybe. If you have any question, maybe yeah. you can contact me via email. Mm -hmm. Okay, All right. okay, let's thank okay. again the speaker. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, bye-bye. All right, thanks. Okay, we will move on to the next session. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, uh, so uh, we are gonna have uh, three, uh, Paper spotlights, and uh, first is uh, 
I post layout and the presenter will be uh, Tanaka. Okay, so hey. I think yeah, Zoom Zoom is presenting your you oh. yeah, we, we can catch the sound here. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. So, so today I will explain our study and uh, type of career analysis for real analysis and real generation of scientific posters. Creating a scientific poster that. Okay. Mm -hmm. One second. Maybe it's a problem. Where is the echo? Mm -hmm. I have the speaker on this one. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. no, yeah, go ahead. So, creating a scientific poster that efficiently summarizes our paper into labor intensive and time consuming. Although automating this task using ML models is promising for applic applications, research on scientific poster generation remains scarce due to the high complexity and manageability of the task. Existing data sets for scientific poster generation are either not publicly available or the data license is unclear. So go the gold standard benchmark with clear license is necessary. So before explaining about our, our data set, I will briefly introduce the existing layer to your data set. Powernet is one of the well-known data sets for real analysis and low generation. It contains scientific paper images automatically annotated with bounding boxes and polygonal segmentation across five categories, text, title, list, figure, and table. Lico is a real dataset for mobile application design. But there is no real dataset for scientific posters with clear lines. So I will explain the method to construct our dataset. First, we downloaded posters in PDF format from S1000 research. Then, we kept 7,943 posters under this by license. Then, the PDF files were converted into PIN format as DPI is equal to 100. We excluded posters with file sizes below 200 kilobytes, as they mainly consisted of text, which was unsuitable for real analysis. Finally, 7,855 posters remained. We found that most of the corrected posters were in the bio bio biomedical field. Then we annotated the layout of the posters. We recruited professional data annotators to manually annotate the document layout of the poster. We expand Fabrenet's five category annotation standards to nine categories to acquire fine grain annotations of the layout. Title, poster info, section, text, list, table, figure, Caption and unknown. A title indicates paper or poster title. Author info indicates author and the author affiliation. Section indicates the section title. Text indicates the paragraph. List indicates the directory. Table indicates the main body of the table. And the figure indicates the body of figure. Caption indicates the captions of table or figure. Unknown indicates advertising information or a law of application affiliation. And here is the example of the collected test set and posters and the annotation. 
we can see fine grained and accurate real time solution. And using the corrected test set, we conducted the experiments, real analysis and real generation. So first we explain about the real analysis. We used real LMV3 and DIT for real analysis experiment. We measure the performance of, of the models using the mean average solution at the intersection of elements from 0.5 to 0.95 of our resources. And here are the results. The unknown category was omitted due to the insufficient number of elements. The table shows that React LMV3 has performed DIT in all categories except for table. And the results show that both models show high performances in the title and author info categories. We attribute this result to the regularity of the title and author info blocks since they are always at the top of the process and there is usually only one of each block per process. However, we found that compared to the result on PubLinet and the paper layout data set, in which MIP has to IOU is over 90 in all categories, both models show the performance drop, so indicating the complexity of our data set. Next, we will explain about real generation experiment. We conducted real generation experiments with various settings for the information to be input into the model. Generation condition on types, Gen T aims to generate reals from the number of categories. And generation condition types and sizes, Gen TS, aims to generate reals from the number and size of the categories. Generation condition relationship, Gen R, aims to generate reals from the number of categories and position relationships between the categories. And the completion means generating a complete reals from a part of the real. The, and the refinement means generating a new layout from a layout that needs improvement. We used the layout DM and the layout former preference and the layout prompter for the layout generation model. We used the four metrics to evaluate the model performances in the layout generation experiment. Maximum IOU, MIU is a measure of the highest IOU between the generated layout and the real layout. Alignment indicates how well the elements in the layout are aligned with each other. Overlap is the overlapping area between two arbitrary elements in the layout. Creation exception distance, FID, measures how similar the distribution of the generated layout is to that of real layouts. So a higher MIO value means higher performance. For the other three metrics, a lower value means higher performance. Here are the results. MIU was low for all models, less than half that in PubLinet. In contrast, all models perform effectively on alignment, so indicating that they can generate aligned layers. And layer prompter was the most effective for overlap here, indicating that it generates layers with the least overlap. And layer DM was the most effective in terms of FID, indicating that it can generate layers more similar to real layers on each setting. And layer prompter had performed the other models in the refinement setting, the bottom one, indicating that it can generate layers similar to real layers from noisy layers. And here is an example of layer, gener layer prompter generated layout and the real layout in the refinement setting. It can generate similar layouts to the real layout. Then I will conclude the presentation. We built a new test set called Cypost Layout, which consists of 7,855 science po posters downloaded from the website. All posters in Cypost Layout are manually annotated with categories of layout elements such as titles and PDFs. Cypost Layout is available for commercial research because all the posters are under the CC BY license. For layout analysis experiment, although such elements could be recognized with high accuracy, we found that layout analysis on Cypost Layout was more difficult than on the scientific paper dataset, PubLinet. 
For real simulation experiment, although existing models could generate aligned layers, we found it difficult to generate layers that are similar to real layers. Then, our future work will investigate end-to-end -end methods for generating postdocs from scientific, post scientific papers. That's all. Thank you. Okay, maybe a short uh, question from the audience. Any question? Okay, go ahead. Uh, about one or two months. One or two months. Okay. All right. All right, thank you. Hmm? I don't know because I just uh, asked the professional company to ask it. So, oh, okay. Input or input? Input. 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 In this study, I just uh, generate layers from the given, uh, for example, categories over something like register information. But uh, in the future, I want to build a system to generate layers from uh, papers. OK, uh, let's thank the speaker again. OK, then the next speaker be Jejun. Jejun? OK. Thank you. And Shohei, can you stop sharing the screen? Yeah. Sharing your screen. Okay. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah, you can. So. Hello, I'm Jenjun. I'm bound to work in here and come from Korea. I'm going to talk about our paper, Four Plama, Bridging Design of Video Programming to Modern to Contemporary Layer Generation. The contemporary layer generation is mapping visual or textual content to present day now. In visual contemporary layer generation, this model generates a homogeneous layout with background as its input. With the additional textual content, the output generated layout can be converted to this filter, minimizing the syntax of font generation. Uh, this model can extend to level tests like concrete level type mode auto generation. Following this, our objective is a visual and textual content aware layout generation. The existing layout generation method highly focused on visual content, while the on textual content is still unexplored. Uh, this method typically encompasses two generation types, generative model and in context learning. In generative model, there are two limitations, data inefficiency and numeric optimization. However, as you commonly know, generative model require a large volume of data, and however, obtaining postal layout text pair data set is too expensive due to the copyright issue. This makes it challenging to apply layout generation to the old applications. Next, the generative model addresses the layout as a simple numerical value. So, if I train from scratch without joining the reach, generative model struggles to generate well aligned layout like this generative poster. About in context, in context learning method, the defense in context learning method layout control address visual information by bounded box or balance map. Because the bounded box is too simple to represent complex visual components, we want to embed more fine visual features. In our paper, we tackle these three limitations. Uh, for data inefficiency and numerical optimization, we use the design knowledge of the range model. Because the language model is trained on design text like very UI. Additionally, language model knowledge also can be extended to textual context aware layout generation. 
forbear and forewarn if especially we use, uh, we propose new augmentation method of utilizing the left lane. For limited visual awareness, we train visual adapter for the ear generation. With finely trained visual adapter, we can acquire fine grained visual awareness. This is the overview of our method, and our objective is to develop a language model based multimodal layer generation system. In our architecture, we utilize the visual encoder and adapter and language model. In first stage training, we train the visual alignment, and second stage, we train language model on layer generation. Lastly, the layer generation is converted to code language sequence. In first stage training, we train the visual awareness. We train the adapter using the visual encoder and language model. For training, we constructed 20 million VQA dataset composed of the Lion and conceptual caption and SQL dataset. In second stage, we additionally train the language model to layer generation task. During training, the network receives text and image pair and output HTML format layer generation. For training, we utilize the low length of the patient to prevent catastrophe forgetting. Additionally, we format the layout to HTML sequence. Uh, the input sequence H has uh, three components. The task definition is about element constraint to the layout generation. Uh, this allows for easy modification by changing the task condition. And the text constraint is about text content aware layout generation. We can inject any text constraint in here. Lastly, the HTML format is the task dependent input with the masked element. This is the entire input output example. The output is the HTML format complete layout. Following the method, we can train the language model for visual texture content aware layout generation. Additionally, we propose novel augmentation method to tackle the challenge of limited data. For this augmentation, we use the depth map to preserve cell of object. In here, we estimate the depth map and make a caption and inject them to the control net apps for generating multiple images. To reduce the old example, we selected the K samples from generated images. And we utilize the LMC method similarity measure and the generated image on the right demonstrates how our, our augmentation technique can produce diverse images with preserving the relevant object. About experiments, we use the two data sets, CGL version 2 and post layout. And we evaluate on eight measurements composed of the graphic and content measurement. Additionally, we utilize the Dino version 2 as a visual encoder and code lama for code language training. For augmentation, we selected three samples from 10 generated samples. Uh, we compared our method to three methods, DS Plant, Layer Prompter, and RADM. As you can see in this figure, uh, our lower model shows the high score on the lower measure. Additionally, we assess the impact of our, our augmentation method. Uh, this table shows the result identifying the positive effect of our augmentation method. In a neutral case, RADM shows effectively high score in three in these three metrics. And this metric improves and generates layout on ground truck location. In here, we can identify the information leakage. Uh, because postal data that don't have clean background, we paint the layout elements. And as we can see in this figure, this setting makes a in paint aspect. So we are hypothesis RADM is exploiting uh, in paint aspects. We additionally experiment to identify this problem. For this experiment, we manually paint the cell on objects and generate the layout on the painted images. The result shows RADM generate the layout on the painted area like object detection. And from this experiment, we demonstrate the reason for the successful performance of RADM come from the reliance on the painting aspect, not that not generalizing to uh, poster images. So far, uh, leakage for evaluation, we use uh, our augmentation method. This figure shows our augmentation alleviate the uh, impacting aspects. And left, we can show the impact aspects. We cannot see the impact aspects on the right figure. Uh, this is side effect of our augmentation, and we evaluate on augmented data set for leakage for evaluation. As a result, our model shows the state-of-the-art score in nearly all measurements. And furthermore, our model also can do all type of element conditional generation. 
uh, just by changing the tab definition I introduced it. This shows the region. You can generate diverse element conditional layout generation. And thanks for watching. Okay. Okay, question from the audience. Okay, I'll go ahead. Uh, so yeah, she is asking what kind of architecture you use after Dino. Uh, uh, we just linear adapter that uh, adapted in different multimodal language models. Okay. Any other question? Okay, then let's yeah move on to the next speaker. Thanks. Are you able to connect to Zoom? Thank you. Do you need the answer? Oh, yeah. Let me see. Oh, I've never seen this question. Yeah, Zoom is yeah, showing the back by them too. Yeah. Um, I get this. Oh, yeah, maybe something is wrong. Um, Zoom is mirroring the home screen. Maybe we first need to connect this adapter. To create a target screen, then then and then you know you can set up the zoom here, I think, or just mirror everything. Yeah, it's switched. I think yeah, you can first stop uh, screen share on zoom, and then yeah, set up your slides first. I think Zoom will have to uh, watch the. Uh... Choose the target screen if there is one. Or no. Maybe. Well, if it's not working, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Zoom will get the other view. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. All right. Sorry about the delay there. Um, Okay, so I am Curtis Wigginton with Adobe Research. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Um, unfortunately, our first author, uh, Sankit uh, Biswas, was not able to join us today. And uh, this work was a collaboration with uh, him and the. Uh, uh, and so let me just uh, move through the introduction. 
Um, so with document uh, designs, there's a variety of different types of layouts that we might encounter. Um, some documents are visually rich, um, some are uh, denser in text, and they're made to communicate different things. Some are supposed to be understood at a glance and some need deeper reading. And so this motivated our work that we wanted to be able to um, both process um, the visually rich documents, but also text heavy information dense documents in our work. Um, so I'll talk uh, briefly through some related work here. Um, the version one of this work um, was a pixel-based approach, and as we heard in some of the uh, prior talks today, there's some discussion of what the, the best way to represent documents are, whether that's pixels or um, some kind of sequence of elements. Um, other approaches uh, include FlexDM, which is an excellent work, I believe, uh, co-authored by some of the organizers here today. Um, and in this work, uh, uh, the uh, model will do a variety of tasks, um, predicting uh, missing um, aspects of the document, such as missing layouts or uh, different styles um, in the document. Um, we see layout diffusion and layout GAN models. Um, these are state-of-the-art works. Um, they focus primarily on layout, but maybe not other attributes that we care about, such as text um, or um, other content in the documents. And uh, finally, uh, you know, there's many related works which I'm including here. One other one is layout transform for the second time, just going to continue. Um, so to jump into our method, um, we build upon prior work um, that outputs, uh, that represents documents um, by a category or label, such as title, table, um, encode the position of the layout in X, Y. Um, we also include additional information um, into this represent representation, including um, the actual text content of the documents and font information, such as the font name, um, font size, um, other attributes of the font, uh, being italic or bold, um, uh, to represent the font. Uh, overall, it's a fairly simplistic framework. Uh, in, in this paper, we used uh, the GPT-2 architecture. Uh, fundamentally, you, you could use really any decoder-only uh, language model approach. Um, and as you kind of see in the bottom section there, uh, we represent uh, a table, for example, as first the table label, and then its x, y coordinates, and then its cells hierarchically nested inside. Um, this is all flattened to a single string. Um, for the example, for the case of something like a paragraph, this would be labeled paragraph, also with its bounding box coordinates, and then um, the actual contents of the paragraph in terms of the text and any embedded font information that would be there. Um, during training inference, this is just kind of what you would classically expect from a decoder-only model. Um, kind of the one interesting thing is we follow the approach of the layout transformer and use the tail divergence. Uh, we found that this um, just particularly helped with some of the smaller data sets uh, where overfitting and overconfidence uh, might have been an issue. Um, so let's jump right into our uh, results here. Um, we built an additional data set. Um, we call this the uh, PubGenNet. This is uh, a derivative of the PubLayNet, where um, in PubLayNet we had layout information, but there's additional information embedded in the PDF, which is not fully leveraged. Um, this includes um, the actual text content, so the words that were in there, uh, word level bounding boxes, uh, and all the font information. So the fonts are embedded, font size, um, bold, italic, that kind of information is often embedded in the PDF. So uh, basically we leveraged the original PDFs um, from the public net, um, used their annotations, and then we're able to extract out um, this extra information from the PDFs that we, we found useful. Um, and so we looked at uh, two tasks uh, in this work, um, the document completion task. Um, so this is basically given some set of subset of the document. We want to you know, predict the rest of the document. So uh, maybe leaving out some of the elements and predicting the next uh, elements, filling out the rest of the documents, and then just uh, single multiple text box placement. So if we wanted to say we have a design, where is the best place to add a text box? Um, that's the task. And that was um, similar experiments to what we see in FlexDM and the, the Prello data set. Um, okay, so for some results, um, to start off, we, we see that uh, our model is, is not uh, performing completely up to par to the multimodal FlexDM. Um, in this case, it had, uh, for the single box, um, 
we don't have as strong of a multimodal input, but I think uh, the interesting thing here is given uh, the simplicity of the decoder architecture and the uh, the input that we are given, it's, it works surprisingly well. And then uh, when there's multiple text boxes, that gives the decoder model additional context, uh, and we get much closer to approaching those results. And for the BDE store, um, we do have um, very good results. So I think this is just showing the promise of the decoder approach uh, uh, for this task. Um, additionally, uh, when we apply this then to document completion, this one we evaluated on our pub um, gen yet, and we compare it with uh, layout transformer and layout transformer plus uh, plus. We heard a little bit about uh, some of these in earlier talks today. Um, and also, uh, in some cases, we are not performing state of the art, but we're very close. Um, it, it's interesting to see that uh, our results uh, without text versus with the text, uh, there's a significant improvement. And I think that just tells us that. Uh, including the text in the generation uh, provides the model with lots of clues that it's able um, to do and, and leverage. And then we, we in fact, do get um, state of the, uh, results um, uh, in some of the other metrics that we see here. So uh, here's one qualitative example, right? So if we were to leave out this table and we were to say we want to complete the rest of this, um, it would generate uh, the table with, with the textual content and everything. Um, for the sake of time, I'm just going to move on. Um, so I think the, the key highway, uh, highlights that I, I would like to uh, just emphasize in this work is that uh, we want to design just a simple autoregressive decoder-only um, document generator framework, and I think um, we see promising results with this. Um, and I think this is a flexible framework that can work on both uh, structured, text-rich documents as well as um, creative design documents. Um, I think the, you know, as we think about what future work this will um, apply to, uh, our, our approach we could see was kind of struggling in some of the cases where multimodal would help a lot. So vision language model, I, I think we see a lot of uh, really great state-of-the-art uh, models that can do multimodality. I think applying um, these techniques to those would work. And I think there's a greater need also for um, evaluation techniques, um, me metrics that encompass kind of coherence, readability, relevance, and visual appeal um, to, to these document properties. Um, so uh, thank you for your attention today. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay, maybe let's take a question from the audience. Uh, I can also take questions at this session. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Anybody? Uh, no? Maybe we should go to the poster session there? Great. Right. Thank you. Right. Uh, so the poster session will be in the ARC exhibition four, which is like a five minute walk from here. Uh, so uh, thanks again for attending this workshop and then yeah, let's enjoy the rest of the poster session. Okay. <laughs>